Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. This is probably going to be the first video I publish in 2023, so Happy New Year! Um, today we have a sort of first impressions kind of video slash mini review sort of thing. Um, so I was contacted by Grabby back in December about reviewing a new travel watercolour kit that they've put together. I said I would do it but obviously with the time frame of when the package was supposed to arrive and everything else going on um, I did explain to them I wouldn't have time to do it until the new year mainly because I was traveling just before Christmas and then we had lots of family plans uh, just before and then after Christmas until the new year so not a lot of time to uh, film and record or anything like that and also my husband's work has picked up a lot and he's got a lot going on there which means I have less free time to be able child free time to be able to um, do stuff like this and I really wanted to film this in daylight hours because it is a review and you know um, I was kindly sent this set of paints um, this kit rather um, for free in exchange for a honest review um, I'm not being paid to make this so just making that all clear I will have a uh, link down below to where you can purchase this I don't know if I have a discount code or not but if I do I will also include that below um, there is a code here gravity 12 for 12% 12 off but I think my code if I have a code it'll be for more than that so just make sure you check in the description box for that um, also really quickly I wanted to add I still have lots of videos that I filmed in 2022 and there's actually one that I filmed from 2021 that I have still not published so I am working my way through editing these older videos and things so they will be coming out soon um, in the new year so just apologies if some of the videos when I'm talking and stuff the, the stuff I'm talking about might seem a bit outdated like I might be talking about being pregnant or just having had a baby um, and all of that so just just so you're aware <laughs> the timings are a little bit off at the moment um, so yeah so this is the travel watercolor kit that Grabby have sent it says 12 watercolors 12 vibrant colors highly pigmented high saturation and easy to blend 100% non-toxic terrific for travel terrific for travel words Metal storage case and palette, perfect for artists of all levels, premium. So I guess we shall see. I like the artwork on the cover, that's really nice. And then on the back you have a different set of animals. The set, and it includes here what the set includes, which we will go through as we open it. Um, oh, there we go. So it's a really compact set and it comes in this blue pouch there we go open it up we'll see what we've got in here so we have pencil sharpener uh also looks like a pretty standard white eraser um we have a swatch sheet and what i think is a little pad of paper watercolor paper we have a pen and it's a superior on it so I think we could probably assume maybe that the paints are also by the superior brand um, and then I think this if I'm not mistaken is the travel brush yeah oh that's nice I like the twisty screw um screw on and off sort of function it means the brush is nice and sturdy you're not going to have any issues with it coming apart while you're painting i've had that with some travel brushes in the past um it doesn't say what size it is does it say on the box what size it's supposed to be yeah so around four so it's a smaller size but it's good for details and stuff so i mean for the size of paper they give you that's probably not the worst size brush either and then finally, we have the paints. So it's a standard sort of metal palette. You have the ring pull, ring thumb holder. I personally don't like it. I don't use these and I don't like it when they're loose. This one's quite loose. So what I typically end up doing is grabbing a bit of washi tape or masking tape, whatever I have on hand. And I'll just tape it down so it doesn't keep rattling around as I'm um, using it. This one's interesting. This palette's interesting. It has, um, 
three wells in the top. Normally pallets of this size, and I have one here I can show you, only have two wells in the top section. So I actually like the fact that it has three. I think it gives you more flexibility when mixing paint. So I appreciate that aspect of it. And it has the two flaps and the paints are already unwrapped for you, which is great. It's less mess, although there seems to be some sort of pigment dust that's spread around on some of the paints, especially that white. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that there. There does appear to be space if you squish them down to fit like an extra pan in either end and I think you might even be able to fit a pan in the middle I'm trying to see if I can find a loose watercolour pan to show you what I mean just grab one out of here Ooh. yeah you can just about fit it in that way and it will definitely fit in this way if you wanted to so I think you could definitely squeeze in a good amount of like extra pans if you wanted to add your own paints into the set a lot of sets um, a lot of these tins you can only fit the pans in um, sideways you can only fit them in this way but this one you could fit it in like this like the you could fit put it in this way the same way as you do in the metal racks sorry I am lacking words it's a lot like the Prima tins the Prima watercolor tins where you could fit like a whole extra row of pans in the same orientation as you do in the metal racks so i just wanted to include that information in case it was useful for you so if you did get this and you like okay uh these colors are all well and good but it's not you know maybe there are other colors i would rather have in here so then you can add your own colors to the set as well yeah so that's a nice pencil all right so we are going to get to swatching these out and seeing how they look all right first things first i'm going to draw with the black pen in the slot for the white so we can check the opacity and also i guess we'll find out if the pen is waterproof or not okay so i'll pop that over to the side grab a jar of water and I'm going to give these paints the best chance. I'm going to pop a little drop on each one. I think it's actually this way around to match the swatch card. All right. So we'll start with the lemon yellow. Okay, that reactivates really quickly, which is nice. It's not too, it doesn't take long to activate. And we'll go over the lines here a little bit just so we can see, test the opacity there as well. And we'll see if they, they seem to have not terrible flow, which is decent flow, which is nice. So that was lemon yellow. Then next up we have cadmium orange. I'm going to assume these are not true cadmiums just because uh that those are quite expensive pigments and from my recollection this kit doesn't it's fairly affordable actually so i will double check how much it is and either pop it on screen or put it in the description box i cannot remember off the top of my head then next up we have cadmium red so some of the cakes are a little bit, some of the paint, the cakes of paint are a bit loose in the pans, but that should be fine. Yeah, they're all reactivating really well, not having any issues with pigmentation or a lack thereof. They're all really nicely pigmented. There's good flow when you touch up the clean water to the paints, the paint flows nicely. Next up we have Rose. So one thing I'll say just on first impressions with this kit is it lacks a good magenta. This rose colour I'm pretty certain has white mixed into it just from looking at it. So 
I'm not sure if it would mix a nice purple or not, but I guess we'll we'll do some mixing and we'll see how how they look. And next up we have ultramarine. It's a pretty standard sort of colour and it's not an expensive pigment so I would hope that this is a true ultramarine although it looks a bit opaque. I'm not sure, I have a feeling this might have some white in it but I don't know for sure. We'll see. Then we have royal purple which again looks like it has white in it. It's not that sort of rich deep purple I would expect but it's more of a lilac type of colour. Then we have cerulean blue which definitely looks like it has some white. None of this is to say that these are bad paints or anything, it's more just my observations. It's definitely not a true cerulean because a true cerulean is is a cobalt based pigment and um, granulates and this one is not that. Again that's fine, I wouldn't expect to find true cobalts or true cadmiums in a set like this. Then next up we have sap green and this is a very bright looking green. Yeah, it's a bit bright for a sap green in my opinion. This is more like a leaf green. Or like a may green type colour. But you can easily um, adjust this with other by mixing in other colours. Then next up we have burnt umber. I'd say this is a bit light for a burnt umber. It's more, it's more like a burnt umber that's been mixed with a burnt sienna type colour. Not a bad colour to be honest. It's a nice warm brown. So definitely a good colour to have. Then we have red copper. So this is like a Venetian red or Indian red type of colour. This brush is really nice though. I'm definitely enjoying this brush. And then we have Payne's Grey, which I really appreciate that there's a Payne's Grey in this set and not a black. Nothing against people who like using black in their watercolours, I just think Payne's Grey is a little bit more versatile of a colour to have. It's nice to have that nice dark that's not completely black. That's really nice. I actually really, that's a really nice Payne's Grey. I like it. It's got a nice blue undertone. And then finally we have the white. We shall see. Ah yes. And the white is completely transparent. So it would be good as a sort of like opaque white. We'll see what that looks like once it's dried, but you could probably use it to mix pastels and stuff if you wanted. So that's what they look like at the moment. Apologies, the brown has bled into the green. But we're going to let this dry and see what it looks like.
all right hey guys so it's a few hours later it's the evening now as you can probably tell from the poor lighting situation unfortunately it's what i have to work with um i was filming earlier today but then um and my husband was watching the kids but he ended up needing a hand with the baby who's not been having the best day and um yeah she's just been super fussy today it's not been easy and um so yeah i ended up not being able to do much else and had to go help out with the kids because that's life sometimes anyway back now um so i did the swatches on the swatch card given they don't look terrible um they definitely look more opaque than i would expect from like artist quality so i'm not expecting these to be artist quality paints because the kit is not an expensive kit it's meant to be like an introductory sort of travel kit option um my key concerns with this kit are that the pink and the purple are pretty opaque and the and the two blues are also not like the cleanest sort of blues this one definitely has white in it and i'm pretty sure the ultramarine is not a true ultramarine either um which is a shame because we could have done a lot with a proper ultramarine or a clear blue which didn't have any white mixed in uh the browns are okay the paints gray is really nice uh the lemon yellow um the orange and red are fine sap green is a bit garish but you can easily play around with that by adding other colors to it the white here looks a bit gray i think just because my brush wasn't clean after having swatched the paints gray anyway the pen does look to be waterproof at least which is good um i also wanted to give the paints as fair a go as possible so i also swatched them out in larger swatches in my cuddy watercolor sketchbook uh, there you go, Cuddy Papers. This is a 210 GSM paper, but it's 100% cotton. It is, let me just zoom you guys in. Um, it's decent, really good quality cotton paper that's fairly inexpensive, so it's very affordable uh, cotton sketchbook. And I do, I have used this a lot for different paintings and swatches and stuff, so it's good paper. I'm very familiar with it, and I enjoy using it. So, like I said, I wanted to give the paints the best go possible and they definitely look better on this paper again the white looks tinged with the paints gray because i don't think i cleaned my brush properly um some of the colors particularly in these darker ones you can see there's some sort of texture in the paints where the wash meets the mass tone um i'm not sure i think that's i don't think that's granulation i think that's probably more because of like whatever fillers they use in the paints um for these particular paints and the purple and the rose definitely definitely look more opaque and almost chalky um on these swatches the rest of the colors are passable um i then went ahead and did some mixes so i'll quickly run through what i did here sorry if you can hear wind and stuff in the background it's raining and howling wind outside there's nothing much I could do about the weather. It is what it is. So here we have the yellow mixed with cadmium red and it gives a nice orange. Um, and then here we have the yellow mixed with the rose, which again gives a nice sort of slightly more muted orange color. Then we have the yellow and um, what they called ultramarine. So that gives a nice green. Um, it's a little bit more uh, cloudy or a bit more opaque than I would expect from that sort of a mix. Then we have the yellow with what they call their cerulean blue which again gives a slightly brighter green then i have the yellow mixed with sap green which gives a really bright lime green then i mix the yellow with the purple the royal purple to see if it would neutralize and it doesn't quite neutralize which i wasn't expecting it to um but it gives a softer sort of lighter brown color then i did the yellow with the Payne's gray which gives a nice sort of moody mossy green color which i actually really like um yeah i do really like that paints gray as a dark blue then i did cadmium red and the ultramarine to see if that neutralized and it does a little bit it creates a really sort of dark muddy purple brown color and then i did the royal purple with the ultramarine to see if you could get a nice darker purple and it kind of worked then i did the rose and purple and then I did the rose and the cerulean, and that's definitely a paler purple. 
Um, and then we did the rose and Payne's grey, and again, it gives a slightly darker, more moody purple, which is quite nice. Then I did the burnt umber, I believe it was, this brown. The burnt umber with the ultramarine. And then I think I did the burnt umber with Payne's grey. That definitely gave more of an actual grey colour at the end. Then I did the sap green with the Payne's grey, and that gave a nice green colour as well. And then I think I did the cadmium orange and ultramarine, and that again gave a nice sort of brown brown tone like a darker brown um so yeah definitely got some decent mixes out of this set probably more so than i was expecting i definitely didn't think some of these mixes would come out as nicely as they have um so now i'm going to think of what i'm going to paint probably some loose florals or something and i'm going to try out the paper that they gave as well and see how that works and i'll probably do that as a time lapse and then come in and have a chat with you guys at the end to see see how everything turned out. Um, first thing I wanted to note is the texture on this paper is very sort of um, pronounced and it's quite a machine texture so you, you can probably see and I showed a bit at the beginning before I started painting you can see all the divots in it and it feels very sort of like a mechanical texture which is not to say it's a good or a bad thing I, I'm not particularly a huge fan of it myself but it's fine for just like Fun little paintings like this. I just did a simple little floral with some leaves and then at the last minute decided to throw in a background. I thought hey why not let's try it out and I did everything with the size um, 4 travel brush that came in the kit because I wanted to see um, how it would cope with all that and then I even went in and darkened some of the edges to create like a vignette type effect and it handled that pretty well. Um, yeah it did all right. It hasn't dried yet so we'll take another look at it I'll, I'll try and remember to film a little clip of it at the end once it's all dried um, but the paints they mixed fine in the palette about as well as I would expect um, this well here I did go ahead and add in some white I thought I'd try it out I don't usually mix white into my watercolors like this but I thought I might as well since it's there we'll let's give it a test um, it worked out okay I still ended up using a lot of water to lighten the color before I painted it on for the background anyway um because even with the white it was still fairly it was a bit darker than i wanted um and yeah otherwise 
you know, I was able to mix the colours for all the different flowers. I didn't use any of the colours straight out of the pan for the flowers. I wanted to like mix them and see how they would work like that. And the greens are all mixed as well. Basically all the colours I used are mixed. I didn't use anything straight out of the pan. I just wanted to see how well it would work as a mixing palette. Um, and like I said, it works fine. The issue I have is that some of these colours are not what they say they are. So uh, the cadmium orange and cadmium red, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, burnt umber, you know, even the red copper is more like a burnt sienna or red ochre type colour. Uh, those are fine. Those are pretty standard colours and the shades are pretty spot on. Oops, sorry, off screen there. Uh, are pretty spot on. Um, you know, they're passable. The blues, however, the ultramarine and cerulean blue, these are not... I mean, the ultramarine is okay i guess the cerulean blue is definitely not a true cerulean so if you're following along with the tutorial for example and someone's using a cerulean blue you're not going to get the same effect with this blue because cerulean blue is a granulating blue and that's what a lot of people use it for so just so you're aware uh the sap green like i said is a little bit harsh but you can easily tone that down make it a bit more of a natural green by mixing with the paints gray or some of the browns um the ultramarine as well similar sort of issues as with the cerulean blue but not quite as bad the rose and the royal purple they're okay they're not my favorite i would much rather there have been like a proper magenta in this kit and any other purple like a proper purple not a purple with white mixed in it um or whatever this is um I definitely think that would have been more useful so if you did get a kit like this if you did get this kit for example because you liked some of the other aspects of it it comes with a decent tin there's space for like an extra pan on each end and then you could fit more pans down the middle i would definitely 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 recommend if you do get this kit to get a proper magenta either like a quinacridone rose or a quinacridone magenta something like that because it's definitely going to open up your mixing opportunities with the other colors that you have and i would also suggest getting a proper ultramarine or a phthalo blue of some kind or even like a phthalo turquoise again opens up a lot of mixing opportunities if you're looking for this to be a versatile mixing palette and the royal purple quite frankly i would replace that with pretty much any other color and it would be more useful than that one um I personally don't feel like white really belongs on a beginner palette. I, I, I feel like you should learn the basics of watercolour before experimenting with other things. And a lot of people who come to watercolour from other mediums will look at white to lighten their colours. Whereas in watercolour, traditionally speaking, you use water to lighten your colour because that's the whole point. Um, but having said that, some people do use white with their watercolours and there's nothing to say that that's wrong. I just feel like a lot of people, if you're coming from another medium, tend to use white because that's what they're used to doing rather than learning how to use the water to lighten their colours. If you want to use white later, once you know, what you, you know, once you've understood that and learnt that aspect of it, then fine. Um, that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. You don't have to agree with me on that one. Like I said, that's just my personal viewpoint. Um it's not going to be any good for you as like a highlight color to like add on top because it's not particularly opaque enough for that um so yeah i don't see a huge value in having that white in this palette um because like i said even for the background when i did mix white in to the green color i'd mixed i still ended up using water to lighten the color anyway because the white didn't lighten it enough um or i would have had to dig around for ages in the pan to get enough white out to do that Anyway, like I said, that's just my preference, not something you have to necessarily agree with. I'm giving my opinions on this kit uh, for you guys. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little video. Let me know what you think. Thank you again to Grabby for sending me this kit. I realised I never actually tested out the pencil. Just This is just the top sheet, so it's not actually the watercolour paper. But yeah, pencil's a pencil. The eraser is an eraser. The brush, in my opinion, is the standout in this kit. The actual tin is quite nice as well. It's pretty sturdy. Um, the tray inside is a bit loose, but that's pretty typical with these sorts of 
metal tin trick palettes that the tins are a bit loose if you take it out oh geez there you go you have extra mixing space down here i don't know anyone who's ever actually taken the tray out to use this for extra mixing space in my entire like watercolor career career life and it, ever since i started watercolors i follow a lot of watercolor channels on youtube and artists on instagram and i've never once seen anyone or heard of anyone use these parts for mixing but it's there if you want it what i sometimes do is if the rattling gets really annoying i either i put a bit of blue tack or um you could even put use a bit of your of a kneaded eraser uh, works similar to like blue tack to stick the tray to the tin and that just stops it rattling around as much when you're painting so you don't get that noise um but that's like i said optional you don't have to do that the tin functions fine i like having the three mixing areas i know i already mentioned that the swatch card is great it would have been nice if the swatch card was just that little bit smaller so it could actually fit into the palette rather than having to keep it separate but i mean that's me just being a bit nitpicky at this point everything else with the palette works well let me just check this pencil sharpener yeah it sharpens a pencil now i don't know what to do with the shavings <laughs> there we go um yeah and i like the fact that it comes in a self-contained bag like you can fit everything in here and all you need is water to then be able to paint out and about on the go i could definitely see this as being a great thing to be able to just throw in your handbag you've got the paper I mean, you can also add a water brush to this if you wanted. Again, I'm so sorry if you can hear the wind in the background. It is so loud out there right now. Um, yeah, I don't have a water brush handy. I thought I did have one up here. But you know one of those water brushes where you put water in the barrel of the brush and squeeze it and the water comes out and you paint? That's the only thing I would say you could maybe add to this kit. But I personally don't like water brushes. So for me, there not being one in this kit is not really a negative. For some people that might be but yeah anyway that's what i think that's my opinion on this kit i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please uh give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think of this kit is it something that you'd be interested in interested in i think it would make a nice gift for like a younger artist um maybe if you went ahead and added in a couple of extra colors to kind of create a slightly better well-rounded uh color selection i think a better mixing selection i should say um like i said i definitely would add a couple of colors to this to make it a bit more well-rounded so that's it for today thank you so much and i will see you guys next time take care bye